I'm really pleased today that Jimena has come to present some of her work to us. Um, I'm going to introduce her and she's going to speak for about an hour and a quarter to an hour and a half and then um, we'll have some time for Q&A after too. So Jimena, Jimena Alacon is a sound artist researcher interested in listening to interstices, dreams, underground public transport and the migratory context. Her research focuses on the creation of sonic telematic performances using deep listening, telematic improvisation and interfaces for relational listening. She has a PhD in music technology and innovation from De Montfort University and received um, a deep listening certificate from the Deep Listening Institute, uh, studying with Pauline Oliveras, Ioni, and Heloise Gold. She has been awarded um, with postdoctoral fellowships, such as the Leverhulme Trust Early Career Fellowships, and um, which led her to develop Sounding Underground, and a CRISAP UAL fellowship um, between 2011 and 2017, here, <laughs> where she developed telematic performances exploring the in-between sonic space in the context of migration. She recently finished work as a Marie Curie Fellow, um, where she was between 2017 and 2019 at the Center for Interdisciplinary Studies in Mus uh, Rhythm, Time and Motion, that sounds great, at the Department of Musicology at the University of Oslo, um, developing her project Intimal. Uh, which I think she's going to talk a lot about today, which is fascinating. A novel, physical, virtual, embodied system for relational listening, integrating body, memory, migration, and telematics. So, yeah, please um, join me in welcoming Jimena. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, um, Annie Go, for inviting me, and Salome Verglin. Um, I'm very pleased to be here. This was my home uh, for six years. Um, as a, I was working here as a research fellow at CRISAP and enjoy a lot of that. And, um, and then I left because I went to Oslo, to Norway, thanks to a Marie Curie um, fellowship, postdoctoral fellowship. Um, I had the opportunity to be as Annie introduced me in the University of Oslo, um, learning something that I didn't know to, to continue uh, uh, all the ideas that I have accumulated during my, uh, the years of research. So today the focus will be, the focus of my talk will be uh, Intimal, the project that I developed there. Intimal um, stands, it's an acronym for Interfaces for Relational Listening. Um, body, memory, migration, and telematics. I will talk step by step what all of that means. Um, and also I would like to give you a bit of background. I don't know if some of you know me or have heard about me, um, but I would like to give you a background of my work before Intimal, um, because uh, of course when you start to do art work, you, you have the same ideas, but they take kind of different shape and um, because of processes, because of people. So interface is really um, a way of relating to something. So I think uh, I've been working in, in relations for a long time, uh, interrelations between distant locations. So I just want to point out, although I'm not going to play this because this is a very long work, um, it's called Sounding on the Ground. This was the work that I developed um, the first, London on the Ground, during my PhD. And then that I have a op postdoctoral opportunity with the Liverhulme Trust. I um, included um, the metro of Mexico City and um, Paris. This is an interactive sonic environment that you still can visit in the web and it will die because all the digital is ephemeral, but it will die in one year because it's built in flash and uh, it will no longer um, 
the web will, will not longer support Flash. So yes, it will be great now to develop it in HTML5, etc. cetera. Uh, but yeah, that's... So but basically, you go there, it's online, um, and then you can travel between different cities uh, with uh, sounds that commuters um, commuters record, recorded their journeys, and then they select fragments of the journeys that were interesting for them. Um, so, and based on all of that, uh, I created kind of links between these distant locations. So, so this is the idea of interstitial space. Also, you go inside the underground, and then you go up, and then something is happening in between, symbolically. Uh, it's almost kind of an oracle that I recommend to do if you take the tube, um, if you listen to that. So that's a, a really um, nice uh, background for the idea of interfaces. That was a screen-based interface. Uh, but I was working actually, I was questioning the body. So as you see, I have also kind of the body in little bits of image I have there. But this is interesting. This is still because it's... Um, the body is a worker in, in Mexico City. So um, when I was here in Crisap, I developed uh, telematic sonic performances. So that was my work in, um, I call it networked migrations. So after have been working with trains almost for seven years, that was my PhD and, and, and uh, my uh, first postdoc, um, I was living in Leicester. And uh, of course, the idea of an underground was quite far from me, although I come to London, but, but it was far and, and I felt disconnected. And this is where I met Pauline Oliveros. I don't know if uh, you have heard about her, but she's one of the most important composers in the US. Uh, she passed away three years ago, um, but she was one of the pioneers of electronic music, uh, kind of bringing all these ideas of John Cage to um, uh, extending our idea of, of listening to the sound continuum as it travels in time and space. So I had the great opportunity to study with her. And um, deep listening is a practice that involves sonic meditations, uh, dream work, because the idea is that, or dream play, the idea is that we listen uh, for, uh, for 24 hours, and um, and listening to our body, body movement. So it's an embodied listening. It's not only with our ears, but with the whole body. Um, so she asked me, what do you want to listen to if, I, if you want to go deeper into listening? And I said, well, I would like to listen to my own migration. I was kind of, I say, well, trains is no longer, uh, I'm not connected to that reality. I want to connect to my reality. Um, and this is how I started. And I started to work in improvisation with other people who have experienced migration, first in my home. Um, and then when I had the opportunity to work here, I said, I want to add um, technologies, technologies of networking, because how nice to to, to express and to explore this location or that in between sonic space in the context of migration, but with networking technologies. So, so this is what uh, I started to do here. And uh, why migration, apart from, from what uh, is, is not necessarily a theme, but a feeling. So there is an author called Sarah ah Ahmed uh, she says, we experience a radical change in our spatial and temporal embodied multisensory experience. I don't know how many people are here from other places, but uh, probably we all, we are all becoming migrants. But basically, when we move to a new geography, it's a human experience trying to find our bearings. And in trying to find our bearings, sound is so important because it's our surroundings, but it's also our voice. We have to learn many of us have to learn a second language or a third language and that also informs us as who are who we are how we perceive ourselves and how uh, people perceive us so there is a very strong change but in terms of sound is very interesting and profound too 
So I use networking and transmission technologies. So that is basically bidirectional streaming of sound. And that comes in all shapes and forms that come very high quality of sound. So there, are, there is software which really transmits sound without compression. That's called jack trip. Um, but you need a, a, a big bandwidth <laughs> to work with that. You need to rely in, in large organizations. And there are other softwares such as SoundJack um, uh, that uses high quality compression. You can use it from your home. Um, and other technologies, uh, TubeLog, which is no longer exists, um, um, Google Hangouts, Skype, and now Zoom. So, so yes, I, I was exploring that. So, so I, I developed here uh, this. I, I uh, was working with how to access to that space. We uh, ask access through deep listening to network listening, because when you try to play with others who are far, you have really to listen carefully to them. You, you are not seeing them in many cases. Um, Francisca Schroeder talks about that in network listening, we, we experience a kind of unselfing. So you are not lo longer only thinking of yourself, but you have to think of the others. So I found that interesting. So I want to play here a big excerpt as a historical document of my first telematic sonic performance. It was called Letters and Bridges, uh, Cartas y Puentes, and it was between uh, Leicester, where I was living, and Mexico City. So basically, people were exchanging letters of, they are all migrants from different parts of the world, and they have letters that they keep of people that, who they love, and they were just sharing that in many different languages. So that was the performance. Kruch. 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 La lengua, la 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 And uh, the second performance also that year um, was Migratory Dreams. That was between London and Bogota. And I work specifically, so I started to be very interested in my own migration. I'm from Colombia. So I wanted to work um, with Colombians only uh, at that time. Um, just really exploring other ways of talking uh, between us. Because unfortunately, for the political reasons um, and tension of our conflict, um, at some point it was very difficult to um, speak even between families. You know, if, if you don't agree politically to, uh, with, with, with other persons' views, then the conversation just stopped. So I wanted to elevate the conversation, and I thought dreams was very important a space to meet and to talk about, just to imagine possible worlds, really, to our quite uh, harsh realities that, that we have to live. And deep listening, as I said before, involves dreams. So I work with uh, Colombians who have migrated uh, to London, and also with Colombians with experiences of migration, but who have gone back to Colombia. So this is an excerpt. <laughs> Muy blanco. Nieve. 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 Palabras cargan sus emociones a la misma vez que mis emociones se desarrollan junto a las personas que me rodean. 
el ser misterioso sí Cascabel, dice él. Soy como un pequeño cascabelito. El cemento hacia lo natural. Well, here I, I guess many of you probably didn't understand the narratives, but I want to point out uh, two things here that are the importance of the body as, as transformation, as one of the, the dreamers talk about. And also, as you see, they are sitting. I mean, here they are in Resonance FM. That was the location. So it's a radio <laughs> station. And then the others are in an art venue in Bogota. And they are sitting. So this is kind of interesting because we are talking about embodiment, but really when we are um, interacting, or they were interacting in the, between different locations, they are mostly sitting. So it's kind of, it's, uh, the, the importance is in the voice, but I think there is something else there because uh, the process of deep listening involves body movement. So I, I was kind of in exploration and things always that I realized. Um, another performance was, I mean, the most recent was Suelo Fertile, Fertile Soil, that I did here between Mexico, London, and Linz. Um, this uh, performance, uh, I wanted to involve binaural microphones, because when, when, you, um, when you hear a conversation online, you don't distinguish which sound is which, you, because everything is overlapped. So I wanted to uh, forms to, to distinguish that. So I don't know if you're familiar all with binaural microphones, but are these microphones that you place in your ears and they kind of mimic more or less how you really can listen to, to the space, how humanly you can listen. Um, so, so yeah, I was working with that. I was working, I was thinking of audiences too. Um, I had problems with the loudspeakers, so audiences, I said, okay, so all of them are going to have headphones, uh, how are we are going to do the streaming. So, so when you start to be in telematic sonic performances, you, every single part that you manage is, is a kind of a problem to resolve. It's fascinating, but it's, it could be quite stressful too. So I learned a lot in that performance because at some point um, we couldn't connect between Mexico and London. We could connect between Mexico and Linz, but London was not connected. And this disconnection um, talk a, a lot about the experience of migration. I was working with ideas of uncertainty, certainty and risk, and how the experience of migration also technologies and telematic technologies, the possibility of connect or not, is also telling us kind of you can come here or you cannot. It's like being in a in a port or, or in an airport um, with your passport. No, it's, it's the same that the signal arrives. You can enter or you cannot. Someone decides there um, if the signal arrives. So that was very interesting. And here I have an excerpt of that. What would you like to grow then? I would like to grow security. I would like to be. I would like to accept not being in control of everything. Confianza. Quiero disfrutarlo. Quiero disfrutar el escribir. Quiero dejar de temer. Maybe I'm just outside of time. Well, that's huh? So you can go anywhere. Where do you want to go? Actually, I don't know if I can go anywhere because I feel inside my mind. I feel I'm in that room. But your mind can expand. How about it? Just give it a try. So this performance was between migrant women. So this is where I started more kind of my focus. Um, I just wanted to explore issues of identity, fertility uh, as a metaphor, uh, body, and um, yes, and I work with the migrants. Um, there were many Mexicans because the event that invited me was in Mexico. Um, it was a forum of migration. Mm, 
and from other parts of the world too. So we have um, uh, English and Spanish language here. And uh, after all these experiences, I also work in collaborations with many other telematic performances, but these were kind of the big, big productions. And what I realized was that, that this um, artwork and, and listening, um, people who have experienced migration um, develop an awareness of their multidimensionality. No? When we migrate, we create this, we, we become multidimensional. And, and it's good to be aware of that because it's great. And sometimes we don't know that that is great. Um, so there are kind of feedback like this. Um, how they, uh, how connecting to the others help to connect to themselves. Um, how you can connect with, pe with people and you ne not necessarily need to know everything about them to connect, to have a strong relations because you move in, in different levels. Um, and also about uh, the possibility of healing uh, between distant locations. That was another key word for me, I start to see. Um, the possibility of healing the dreams or, or, um, or proposing end, new ends to the dreams of people between in different locations. That was in the case of the Colombians, particularly the ones living in London. They were really talking of how hard is this city and how they miss all nature of Colombia. And that was something kind of beautiful that the others realize and they start to bring sounds and very interesting thing happened there. So all that was kind of my background before I came into Intima. This is interesting from Suelo Fertil. Um, one woman says that she realized that her voice was her, her extension. And when she listened to that again, because we did lots of exercises of listening, how you speak in different languages, um, she felt that, that a person that she has missed when she listened to herself again, um, and she said, it's like this exercise give me back an arm that I was missing. So in terms of, of body, I, I felt that there were so many interesting things to explore. So with Intimal, I had two main questions. How the body keeps memory of place and how to develop technologies for relational listening between people who are physically dislocated. Um, so what is that of relational listening? You will say it's to make relations. Um, but Lawrence English is um, a curator, an author, who talks about listening to others listening. Pauline Oliveros also, of course, talks about that. And he says it's a bridge between psychological and technological listening. Um, then she, he, in, I mean, he has written two articles about that. In the second, goes really into the microphone. Um, but I take it a kind of wider. So in Intimal, I said, well, it's kind of the possibility, relational listening, to listen to one's own vibrations as I am inhabiting in between distant locations and being able to transmit these experiences across time and, exp and space. So here we arrive eventually to Intimal. So Intimal, I describe it as a physical, virtual, embodied system for relational listening. It's a technological system. Um, it interrelates body movement, voice and language, oral archives, and memories and dreams of place. Um, so, The, the idea with relational listening also in, in migration is to interact with two main issues in the context of migration that we always wonder. One is called sense of place. A sense of place is basically all the uh, attachments, emotional attachments that we have to a place. It could be nature, it could be people, it could be culture, it could be food, but it, all these things that we, that we miss is called sense of place um, and sense of presence. That is basically the feeling of others being present throughout the distance. It's kind of, uh, it's also defined short as telepresence. Presence has so many different uh, definitions, but I take the telepresence. Um, I take also the 
possibility of um, co-presence. Uh, an author called Christine Nowak talks about how with um, co-presence we, we construct intimacy, involving, uh, uh, involvement and immediacy. So there are many ways of, of being present there. Um, so when I said about relational listening, I also talk about how we can make relations taking into account these issues of sense of place and sense of presence. Sense of presence is not only telematically, it's in the, in the distance, it's also physical. And when we migrants arrive to any place, um, our sense of presence can diminish a lot. For example, when we don't know the language, uh, when we don't know anyone, like, we become invisible, as there are some reports here in London of uh, no longer invisible. It's a famous report, actually, of Colombian migration in London. Um, so it's that. So it's how to expand this presence in the place where you live, but also in the place that you left. Uh, is so important for us. So for this uh, work, I work with a case study. So. Uh, with Colombian migrant women in Europe. It was a very important moment, or it is still, that is the moment of uh, a peace process, a peace agreement um, between the government and the oldest guerrilla, um, uh, I think it's in the world, the FARC. Uh, but this, this process, this political process, brought lots of feelings in Colombian migrants. So that was a very important moment. And I work with two sources an oral archive of 20 testimonies of Colombian migrant women, specifically talking about the conflict, how the conflict ha has affected them, and their migration. That was not collected by me. That was collected by an organization uh, called Diaspora Women, who works in London and in Barcelona. And a field work with nine Colombian women residing in the cities of Oslo, Barcelona, and London. So the first thing that I did was to listen to this oral archive. So this oral archive, uh, ha, I mean, it was quite big, long, and difficult to grasp. But I said, OK, I'm going to grasp it in two ways. One is the semantic part, and the other is the prosodic part. So the semantic is about the meaning, and the prosodic is about how, how does it sound for you. So. Um, I created an ontology that I call the ontology of four spheres of migratory memory. So these are body stories, social body, native place, and host lands. They are not really completely strict categories, but I think it is good enough to start. I'm happy that further artists, researchers, they can work more in that, or uh, community groups working with memory. So each of these uh, categories have sub subcategories, because all of that is also because I wanted to work interactively with this material. So I have to organize it in some way to work with, um, with interactivity. Um, so for example, in body stories, we have uh, body events, illnesses, sexuality, sensations and feelings, self-care, um, mind is what people are talking about. Here they talk about the blood family, but also the new family that they create, friends and colleagues, values. Um, childhood and teenage time are so important. Um, and then native place, which involves conflict, conflict event, conflict actors, economy, education, values, and land. And then I decided that host land is going to be a mirror of native place, because we feel that when we leave the country, we will live for, for a better future. But um, uh, in many cases, you also meet conflict. And well, now we uh, don't need explanation for that. But we are in a really critical moment all over the world. So, so conflict is there. Um, is there. Um, so I just wanted to show, so this is kind of the confidential part for the video um, in the editing. But I would like to show you examples of these voices that I call the, the prosody of the voices. So I decided that um, there were three voices that I heard I, I re with different 
uh, women talking, but they, they speak in a particular way certain things. Uh, one is the disillusioned voice, which is a voice that is kind of sad without finished statements, and I'm going to play an example. There are so many testimonies of Colombia and, and the conflict, and there is in Bogota a center called Center of Memory that keeps so many, and people don't go to listen to that because people don't want to listen to conflict. It's so hard. It's so hard because you embody what you listen. It's, it's very sad. And I always had this idea that um, why is there in the voices and how to make, how to make them being heard I didn't develop the prosody too much, but um, I mean, here you can find an article where where all this is um, kind of analyzed about these voices um, that can be managed in a way of the order in which you listen to that. Because if you listen to someone who is demanding and demanding a lot, probably you can stop listening. Or, or listening to something that is sad after sadness after sadness also is, is strong to listen. So this is a still an answer to me, but, but uh, I always feel that it would be interesting to make a balance with that. And, and this uh, helped me actually for, to have my first sample to be heard by the nine women who helped me to develop this project. So this is the other uh, part. So I work with nine women I offer, I open a call for participation, uh, women living in London, in uh, Barcelona and in Oslo, Colombian, and, um, and they applied and, um, and uh, yes, it was very difficult because there were many applications and we made a selection with different backgrounds that are interested in, in listening. Um, so we, I first interview them about their migrations, not necessarily asking uh, why did you leave your country or our country, uh, but more about sound. So I, what my interviews were about what was the space like, the sonic space, when you were living in Colombia? Tell me one day in your life. And, and also when you arrived here. So, so they, they brought very interesting things there. When you when you bring the sonic space, you really you you go to a different space, a different space of conversation, that uh, that is very interesting to be. Um, listening to diversity, the, the difficulty to be diverse in Colombia. Sonically, I see it as a metaphor that there were plenty of sounds in myself, and in Colombia, I was I was repeating the same note, the note that was expected from me, that was part of the same score, or, or the score as the society expects that we all sound. That was the note I was sounding externally, but internally, I knew I didn't want to remain in that. Then we have also a sound within an armed conflict, which probably, unfortunately, is quite relevant this week. We are in a Today is one week of uh, national strike in Colombia. Probably many of these sonic experiences are in this moment being repeated. Um, it was a contrast between the sound like of happiness to be with all your friends and all of a sudden the eruption of the firecrackers of the demonstration and of the Red Guard. I think that defines very well how I did feel there. A deep desire of being with people there, but also a very unstable situation with very strong sounds that suddenly erupted and silenced all of that. So, so if we, we are looking at time and space no? in, in, in sound, so in terms of time, the reflection here is that when you go to another place, you are looking for a future, you jump to a future that um, from a place that for any reason doesn't feel good for you. Um, and it, this, this present um, is kind of entangled in a past, um, which could be especially and culturally uh, oppressive. Uh, so we jump into this idea of future, we go to more developed countries with probably less conflict um, and where we feel Safer in the case with women, we feel with more space, we feel a bit with less fear, and we can speak without be, being silent. Um, but then what happened also in migration, you come and then you live another time and a space. 
So one of them, my participants, says, well, for me, it's like the time in Spain freezes. Freezes when I migrate. I migrate. So in this process, there is, there is loss. So this is kind of a, a really interesting, too, about what is like to em be em the embodiment when you migrate. I'm not sure if because of the Italian or Spanish are similar, but at some point I lost my speaking voice. I think I was lost in a corporal level of memory and identity. And it was a linguistic colonization that took me to the silence until I said to myself, here something is happening. And until I left Italy to come to Norway, I realized I needed to recover my native language, my Colombian identity in every sense. Norway is a very silent country. So I would like actually uh, now uh, to have uh, just one minute to exercise with you, if you don't mind. And you just uh, listen. So I invite you to listen for one minute to the emotions that attach you to the geographical place where you are right now. And then probably when I say change, um, I invite you to listen to one minute to the emotions that attach you to the places that are distant from you. Yeah? Is that good? A bit of listening to, not to my voice. Um, so, is good with the eyes closed? I will just measure here the time. Um, okay, so first, if you just close the eyes and listen to these attachments to this place now. And now I invite you to just to travel uh, to the motions that attach you to places that are distant from you. Okay, so yeah, now you can just come back, open the eyes, and probably to keep this experience, um, if you want to make a note, or if anyone wants to share anything, did you go somewhere? <laughs> yes? First exercise, I went to three places and I linked them to, em to emotions too. The first place is London, okay, noise, ambulance, uh, rush, okay, Dubai, because I'm sl I live there, silence, emptiness, uh, nothing, mm. you hear nothing actually. Egypt, uh, I come from Egypt, so there's anger, there's, the, the, there's anger in the air. Okay, so London, I, I feel because I just came here, the, 
the fear from the unknown, the unbalancement, the instability in Dubai. I'm very lonely, very lost feeling. Nobody, I'm nobody there. I don't feel I'm anybody. In Egypt, I'm not home, in my own home. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing this. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I, I was, I was going to say, um, I don't know, uh, this is weird, isn't it? Yeah, um, I mean, it was kind of hard to conjure up, like, sounds themselves. And I mean, because I'm from England or, like, close here, it was, like, ideas that I always, you know, like, like wood pigeon sound is something that I always equate with being at home but then I was thinking about the times away and it was kind of all just conjuring up recordings that I took mm -hmm. from um, those countries which yeah so I was like hearing recordings as opposed to so it's like you know thinking of photographs instead of the experience so that was yeah I heard recordings I'd made in those countries instead of actual sounds sure sure yeah all, all of them are sounds the ones that we have recorded, the ones that are in our memory, so that's in our body. Mm. Okay. Well, oh, thank yeah. you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. um, I think for me it was really connected to the weather, all these thoughts. Mm -hmm. So at first I was thinking about here and, well, this room, but also just where we are in the city, and since it's, like, close to... Uh, winter solstice, mm -hmm. I feel there's all this heaviness and there's a kind of sadness that's mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. And then I think also like hearing you speak and talking about Colombia and everything, then when you asked to go somewhere distant, I went back to Mexico City and it, it was so different. I was like, oh, the I could feel the energy and the excitement of just being in like the loudness and yeah I felt it was there was such a big clash mm -hmm. and yeah. somehow what I thought was interesting is I would remember my best moments of being mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. like as if if you're far from something of course you remember the beautiful and positive aspects of it like I don't remember my hard days, I just remember my best ones. That's really good. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, all, all these experiences that you have shared, and thank you so much, is, is my idea is that there, there is a way to, to work on that through listening and to find balances, no? Uh, balances between these different uh, places that we are coming from and where we are in, in this location. And this is a work that I did specifically with these nine Colombian women. And, um, and we do a big work in dreams, because for me, dreams are metaphors of, of migration. So we did a work at this Google Hangouts, it's a drawing of, of one of them, of Sylvia. And, um, and we did this sharing how, how, how we listen in dreams, if there are sounds in our dreams, which spaces do we go as you went now? It was kind of a dream time, but is, this is about this unconscious dreams. And uh, what spaces, which directions do I take? I am the main character in my dreams, or, or there are other characters. Um, so yes, uh, uh, that, that was kind of the, the first work with them. In terms of dream, as, uh, this uh, is Ioni who is uh, kind of my dream uh, teacher. Uh, she wrote the book, Listening in Dreams, and she talks about time. She talks about edges in the dreams. It just, she says, are those places in our psyches where we dance with our deepest desires and our deepest fears, uh, where we tether on the preci precipice of the future. They are the places at which we pose, pushed by the present, pulled by the past. What will happen to us if we cross over? What will happen to us if we change? So going forward with all these, these feelings that you mentioned are so common in, in migration and, and, and 
this is I departure also from personal experience, but is how to transform that. This is kind of my interest, how to heal that. Um, so they engaged into that, the participants in, in my project, uh, not only for the work, but they wanted to continue. So they engaged in that for one year. Um, so we, I also invite them to Norway. We went to a very nice place called Gran, and we had um, more deep listening in collaboration with a colleague of mine called Sharon Stewart. And we work uh, also uh, listening to the surroundings, listening to inner geography, listening to our body, our voice, our languages. And after all this work that they had, they have kind of a repertoire. Oh, well, they have so many memories. And I say, OK, so what to do with that? How we are going to navigate that? So I propose to navigate through something called migratory journeys. And as you remember, these four spheres of migratory memory, so I use them, what I have worked in the archives, I use them as a score for them to say, it's an improvisatory score. But I say, well, you're going to tell your story. Probably I know a lot about each person's story because I had a, an interview with them. But between them, they don't know. I mean, probably they know with the perception of things that are happening. And it's not the idea to tell my whole story, but what you what they want to share so the idea is that they share with body movement and voice improvisation in trios they are mainly they don't have experiences of performance most of them um, and the idea is that they were doing in trios one was the main improvisers and the other was the, uh, the resonators main improviser and resonators and then also they were going to listen together to fragments of those archives um, they did that in this uh, wonderful space, but also the day after, I took them to uh, the University of Oslo, where I was working, to a, play, uh, a motion capture lab, which is a place where you, with technologies, you can capture the mo our movement. Um, so I use um, infrared markers, which are these little dots that you put in different parts of the body, and there is a camera tracking all of these movements. Um, also, I use EMGs, electromyograms, uh, which is uh, to capture how the, the muscle contracts and expands, and also breathing sensors. Basically, I was training. It was a training fellowship, and I wanted to use all what, what I, I can, really, to, to know something, something new about a, a, a field called embodied music cognition. So I had two experiments. So the first one is where they tell their migratory dreams. And here is an example. Pienso en Colombia y se me hincha el cuerpo, se me hincha el estómago, se me hincha el cerebro, se me hincha el intestino, se me hincha el corazón. Masa. Peso. Volumen. Tú le san fan de la patria. No. To the queen and save the queen and beyond. Me da mucho frío y comienzo como a temblar y como que intento respirar profundo para que mi cuerpo deje de temblar, pero no puedo dejar de temblar y tiemblo y tiemblo. Y es muy extraño, como que el cuerpo sigue andando sin que yo lo pueda controlar. Miedo, 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 miedo. La valencia, siempre valencia. queriendo regresar al centro, regresar a mí, encontrar mi voz y me pierdo y me encuentro y me busco y me pierdo y me encuentro y me busco. La, 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 en un la, 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 ciclo infinito. Berinto. I 
cosita para que nunca se pierda, siempre tiene que acordarse que a la derecha está Monserrate. Y si Monserrate está a su derecha, el norte siempre va a estar hacia su frente y atrás el sur. Ok, so that was the first experiment. And the second experiment, uh, it was to listen to fragments of the archive, like snippets that we heard before, but from three different women. And, um, and I, the idea is that they were located also in, in trios, in the same group, uh, but back to back, and they were going to listen to e uh, through earbuds. So I was already with this exercise thinking of the telematic possibility. Is what happens when you don't look at others and how will you react to something uh, that you are listening to the same thing, how you will react and what are you going to say. So they listen for 22 minutes um, to this little snippet and between each snippet uh, it was 40 seconds of silence. So they, they have time to, to react. It was free. So this is the example. Hacha y machete. Hacha y machete. Okay, so when I have all these uh, experiences, then I had to have all this, what is called data, and uh, analyze it. Uh, it was something completely new for me, so I started to see these kind of traces that I found actually poetic, but it's when you start to see how, how they move and how not only uh, alone, but how they move together. Um, and I have uh, plots, they are called graphic plots, to see all this data. So instead of, of being, oh, of course I did also, I had also my own methodology of observation and looking um, just body movement with sound, without video but only sound, and I made all my notes. But then I have these plots too. So this is, for example, a mock-up gram, it's called a mock-up gram, that tells you what happened in 22 minutes in time and space. And all these markers that says this is the knee, this is the elbow, etc. Um, they they are the, what what you see there, the list, and all these colors look at kind of the movement. This is really difficult to analyze, but I found it kind of inspirational in the sense that I felt that they were making a space. So for me, I was working with lots of scientists, but what I was looking was a ways that uh, what what all can can tell me something about about what creative possibilities I have um, with all this data. And then also I have the breathing plots that were extremely inspirational for me. So this is just a plot of three people breathing. So in as in the in the first exercise when one is uh, the main improviser and then you can see how the resonators join her more or less at this time. And I I've been working this idea of agency and and being together. So how in one space you you are individual, so you have your self expression, but how you start to be with others, and that was uh, probably the day that I say, wow, that would be so nice. And probably you see that if you are sound people, you see well that that could be sonic immediately. This is what I thought, and yes, it can, but it was not as easy because this um, data comes in very different frequencies uh, than sound uh, information. But anyway, it was inspirational. Um, 
And then I, I said, well, what I see here, yes, we talk a lot about sound, but what is more important for me is the vibration what, that is happening here. Vibration is something that Pauline Oliveros talks about. And there is a wonderful um, scholar, too, if you are interested, called Nina Son Eisen, who talks, um, a, she takes all this physical acoustics and explains very well what is that of vibration. And he, she talks about singing and listening, I will say sounding and listening. But she has this very inspirational um, formula. If singing, I will say if sounding and listening are vibration across bodies causing change, and vibration is relational, and if being is vibration across bodies causing change, then also being is relational. So if you remember all ideas of relational listening, is when so many uh, materials meet together and vibrate. No? So this was very inspirational because instead of streaming sound in my work with telematics, which I have, let's say, has been, is really sometimes demanding, um, how, how about the streaming vibrations? No? Uh, rather than sound itself. So I have all these ideas. And I decided that intimal system, I, was, I wanted to work with walking, walking and directions to feel place, that sense of place I was talking about, and breathing to feel presence. So that the, the word, my keywords, is, is developed in these papers. Um, and then I just want to talk now about the very practical things about artistic and technological implementation of this system. I had the collaboration uh, from um, a research assistants and um, a PhD students and um, at RITMO, and also master students from the Music, Communication and Technology Masters at the University of Oslo and NTNU. So to develop this, we say there are three modules. One is called Memento, which is a navigator through the oral archives. A Respiro, which is a patch to perceive the breathing data from some breathing sensors and sonified in distant locations. And transmission, that is kind of the encounter of all these technologies to be transmitted and also heard perhaps by an online audience. So here we have Memento. So Memento departs from the oral archives. Uh, then it has these four spheres of migratory memory. So there's a uh, lots of work in annotation hmm, of those uh, archives. And then we have uh, text mining of that. Text mining that is basically bring together how these little stories come together from different people. So we, we did it. Um, I, I proposed that I wanted to work with adjectives. And, uh, and nouns. I, I didn't want to work with verbs. I mean, uh, I don't remember exactly why in this moment, but I just wanted to work with that. Um, and then after you have the computer making this text mining, bringing together stories that are similar and putting a bit farther the ones that are far from, from the original story, we have the interaction. And the interaction, I did it with a mobile phone that uh, used as a sensor and is sensing the, how you rotate and how you walk, as all our phones do. So I wanted to work with technologies that people have. Um, and also, um, yeah, uh, people using Memento, they have uh, headphones and earbuds. Um, so Memento also worked that all the material was here in a computer and it was transmitted via Zoom software. That was the kind of the streaming, but it was kind of a local, well, local global streaming. Um, and then we have Respiro. These are the, the sensors, breathing sensors, that are created by a startup company called Sweet Spots in Oslo. And, and we have uh, the capturing of this data, which is basically how the diaphragm expands and contracts. This is all what it does. And then this data comes to a computer and, uh, and then it's transmitted, that is with a maximum speed patch. And it goes to uh, different locations and is sonified locally. So we are not transmitting 
the sound itself, but the vibration of the data. So that was really great because these kind of things you can do it even with Wi-Fi. I mean, we didn't risk too much to do it with Wi-Fi, but it can be done. And this is the setting um, for the performers. So, so we have uh, the audiences around, and then we have three loudspeakers, uh, one with the local sonification, and two, uh, each one for a distant location. So as, I, as you remember, uh, I was working with women based in Oslo, Barcelona, and London, and these were the venues for the performance that I was preparing. This is a bit more the technological part of, with the sensors. And this is the transmission. So here you can see the three locations. Um, I also wanted to capture what people say, but we, we wanted they to be wireless. So we rely in yet another app on the phone called Discord app. Probably you, you know that app, but it's an app uh, used by uh, gamers. Is uh, to chat, to chat with voice and with text too. But uh, what's interesting it was the voice. So we have this transmission when we, with an online broadcast OSB software, we put together the signal of the voices and the sonification, and we transmit it via YouTube. Um, I was interested in transmitting only audio. Um, and here, I also have a score. So we have been working in dreams, and I propose this is a shared dream. So the score was basically a timeline or a time circle. Um, first, where each improviser can uh, express their migratory journey while others are listening. Um, and, and the others can improvise. Um, then, after 30 minutes, uh, th sorry, 13 minutes, 50 seconds, they have the connection with Memento. And then they work with Memento. I call it histomemoriology, this exercise, because basically if you listen to all these snippets, you can almost build this, this story of a country. <laughs> um, and then they do a closing ritual. Um, so at the beginning and at the end, they are breathing too. Um, it's important to say here that they are not listening to each other's voices in between cities, only locally. So they needed to imagine, here it was a bit of telepathy, they needed to imagine uh, what the others were saying, or just remember that person because they have worked together for um, one year. Um, okay, so that was the shared dream. And that was the event. Here it was in Eclectic Art Lab and with the support of Eclectic Art Lab and this university through Krishap. Um, in Oslo was a place called Melahusa and with the support of Vox Lab too. And in Barcelona it was in the University Pompeu Fabra, the support of the Fundación Fonos. Um, so these are um, stills from the performance in each place, London, Oslo and Barcelona. Um, they had so many responses to this um, uh, experience. And in each city, they have different characteristics. I will say um, in London, there was lots of body movement and, um, and also words, while in um, let's say macro body movement, while in Oslo it was more conversational. And uh, in, in uh, Barcelona it was more about body movement and abstract sound with voice. So it was interesting for me to have just a structure and to give people and the, and the groups or the trios to develop their own way of, of being there. Um, okay, so I want to play for you, um, um, yeah, this performance. Uh -huh. what it, uh, so there are two kind of versions that I will play. One is recordings, microphone and camera recording in locations, and then we will see the transmission, which is yet another version. Transmission. 
inspira. Este es un sistema. Si yo doy un paso hacia adelante, la historia cambia. Si giro hacia la izquierda, él estaba solo. Cambio de mujer. ¿Ves tú? Si giro a la derecha, yo no quiero ir, ves tú. Cambio de espera. These are all online too, you can see that. And now this is uh, another version, it has subtitles, with the uh, only sound that is a part of what the online audience listen. Um, so it's interesting because then you start to have more complexity of narratives because are narratives that are mixed between the different cities and they, they are not listening to these narratives. But to the breathing. So there are so many stories there. Uh, I try to translate to English uh, to English uh, uh, speakers, uh, but of course, if uh, you, I, I know already that some of you are um, Spanish uh, speakers, and, and also probably from Latin America, you can relate to to those stories uh, probably a bit closer. So what happened there? So many things happened there. So if you remember, I was interested about sensing place, or so that this this system helped to to sense place. Um, and with the idea of uh, navigating. So I encountered these issues of agency and control. So agency is kind of this possibility of uh, control the, the, the body and the environment at once. No? And when you have a technology, so the idea is that technology helps you to have some agency. But of course, this is still uh, being developed. Oh, yeah. So we have the first test. And um, so in each city, the trio, only one could wear the technology to do that, that we call the brújula or the compass. And the compass, uh, when I ask who wants to be the compass, not everyone wanted to do that. And that was very interesting because they said, I don't want to control what others listen to, or, or I am not a very good guide. So there were so many interesting things about technology and um, an agency. Um, and also, I want to have freedom of my movements, because if I'm with that mobile phone, 
then probably if I want to jump, what happened? Well, of course that happened. They jumped, they went to the floor and the technology was disconnected. <laughs> then they have to connect again. But anyway, that's part of the full process of, of research. Um, but also we come here uh, with presence. So this is very interesting about how they feel presence with these very abstract sounds that you heard, that was the breathing sonification. I never forgot that there were people in other places at the same time doing something that could be similar, or at least connected in some way with what we were trying to do. And it was a specificity in what we were going to do. Then I knew that we were in the same space in the same emotional space, in the same space of story, of response, of communication, of constant listening. So that is interesting because it expands also this idea of presence uh, that goes, usually in my experiments of my work, I feel that I go for, for, uh, further than technology. I mean, human connections go further than technology. We, we are ahead of that. Sometimes it's that we, how we manage technology. Um, more about presence. That is very interesting. There was a moment in which someone from one of the other cities laughed, and we in London heard that through headphones. I know we heard it because when that happened, Kalu, another improviser, and I look at each other astonished. We realized we can hear them, and we started to laugh. Laughter is contagious. It was clear they were there. We were all there. So. That is, for me, an amazing uh, experience because technically they couldn't hear each other. And we know, working with listening, that there is a, a subjective experience. Listening is a subjective experience. Um, but what is very interesting is that when you look at the online recording where you have the three cities, yes, in two different cities, they are laughing at the same time. And I have here the proof. Bueno, si quieres gritar, yo te resueno. Podemos reírlo. <risa> so interesting because it brings the question about how a gesture of breathing, which is created by movement and by talking and by listening, could bring the idea that someone is laughing without us hearing the actual laughter. So this is so interesting in terms of perception and cognition and to develop that for further. So there are emerging things here, lots of issues about the amplitude of sound, when, when all this is uh, more or less amplitude, how you feel presence, the emotional links between them, the expectation that they have of listening to each other, and also that they are following the same score at the same time. There are more and uh, more experiences there about sensing presence, uh, one thing is when they are there, but the other is when they listen to the recording of what they were, uh, yeah, that they created. Um, and talking about the compilation of presences and absences, sometimes we are in a location we are not embodied, and many times being embodied we cannot locate ourselves. Um, so there are so many issues here about um, the fragility of ourselves, our voices, and also uh, the sonorities that all of that create. So this project brings, of course, more and more uh, questions that um, each part needs to be um, explored further. And uh, 
As you remember, I'm interested in healing, so I also ask about that, and this is a really powerful uh, comment, um, how just to have that, the power of uh, speaking, uh, speaking, sharing, listening. Um, she says, because I believe there is a sense of shame in the trauma. Uh, what uh, does not let one speak is the feeling of shame. For some reason or another, there is a self-censorship. I think this is in all human beings, but when we come from a place of conflict and when you feel that, or you know that there are lots of suffering there and you are here and you cannot do anything about that, this is when things happen. But when you have a space where you can share with others, you can start the process of healing. For example, start to forgive yourself for the things that you could have done and you didn't, etc. There are so many stories here of migration. Um, and remembering also the, uh, what I was talking about, the edges of the dreams and migrations, understanding all as a dream space too. Uh, this is very beautiful too, uh, what a, a participant says is about, I feel I'm not from Colombia, neither from Spain. I'm from Intimal, from myself. Um, I share with them that I didn't know, but intima, intima lisa is in medicine, is, the, is a layer of our cells. It's called like that. It's called the layer intima. I didn't know, but I've, I share with that, uh, that with them. And that was really powerful because place disappears. So it's no longer about geographical space, but it's also to go into the body to ground yourself. So I found that also very powerful. For, for migrants. In a future, um, I think this experiment brought lots of uh, learning about sense of presence and sense of place. Um, these technologies I develop, uh, it can be developed just alone or work uh, between themselves uh, in relations. And uh, I would like to develop more signatures of walking because we all walk different. Um, so the, the technology has, or you can have more agency with the technology. Uh, so you can feel more free. It's not necessarily uh, one step in a particular way so the mobile phone can sense you. Um, the same with breathing. Uh, I just uh, am working in, a, finishing the work with, with diaries of, of breathing uh, in a residence in, in, in Madrid. And, uh, and is to explore more that about signatures of breathing, what, it, what is there for, for presence. Um, develop, um, oh yeah, uh, to create a scores with participation of, of the people who are making that um, when the technology is kind of ready so they can play with that and making it fully accessible. I think in a future it will be great to wo work with wearables and um, yeah, and so many things there to, to work. But the other part, which is the one that I can work right now, which is with people. So all this community of women who helped me to create this project, now um, we call it that we have an intimal virtual territory that is a group of Colombian, but also Latin American women, migrant women, who we meet virtually to share dreams and to improvise telematically and to with voice and body movement and to explore um, our virtual territories that are um, go kind of in a different level than the realities that we leave, uh, let's say, the waking realities or the daily life realities, and at the same time support those realities uh, for the different needs that we have. Um, thanks a lot for listening. I think that time and space eventually, I work as a malleable categories that eventually help us to, to migrate. So I have, this is um, the website of Intimal, the project, and my personal website. Um, just here, of course, to acknowledge that that was uh, developed through uh, Marie Curie Fellowship um, in the University of Oslo, also with the support of the Center of Excellence Ritmo. So I'm happy now to hear uh, from your questions. Thanks for listening. Thank 
you so much, Jimena, for your presentation. There were so many kind of things to think with and um, listening to how this developed out of previous work and how, you, how it's possible to deal with these really complex issues of migration, embodied feeling, kind of location and dislocation and how to, I guess, there was a real sensitivity in your approach that I appreciated and in not kind of collapsing any of these stories or reducing them and how they're allowed to, to kind of take their own form working organically with this group. And I appreciate how, um, yeah, the use of technology as well is in order to enable something rather than the ideas and the content being kind of hostage to the technology. That was really nice to... Thank you. Really nice to observe. Um, do we have any questions or comments for Jimena over here? I have a small question about the process. Uh, would you please specify how does the listening through dreams work in your research, in, yeah, in your collaboration with this Colombian migrant woman, please? Yes, yes, thank you for your question. Um, listening in dreams. So, so we work with the part from the um, listening in dreams proposal of Ioni. Um, who work in collaboration with uh, Pauline Oliveros for many years. And this is an approach that um, first we demythify these ideas of dreams that, for example, produce fear in us. And uh, dreams is a place where we feel absolutely free. So in dreams we fly, we are in a place with one shape and then we are going another place with another shape and and it doesn't matter so in dreams we are fully free and then the work of of these experiences that we live in dreams which are stories narratives but not only that actually the most important in in dream in the dreams from from listening in dreams perspective is the feeling so sometimes you wake up and then you you don't remember even what you dreamt, what was the narrative, but you you woke up with a feeling. And that's the most important feel, uh, thing to notice. So first is the recollection of the dream. Uh, there are techniques to do that. So I invite them to do journaling, dream journaling, which is usually in present tense. So it's not, I was in that building, but I am in this building. Um, also then it comes the sharing. Mm, this comes also from lots of uh, indigenous practices and ancient cultures which um, value a lot the dreams as a sense of the feeling of a community. And um, the idea is that when you share, you, we have two, um, um, not rules, I don't want to say there, there were rules, two things to, to notice. We are going to LOJ, which is lift of judgment and avoid interpretation because we have also a, a kind of culture of the need to interpret the dreams no? immediately. So this is something that we are going to avoid because uh, and we are just listening and we listen to the other's dream with the full body. And then from this listening, it could come an improvisation. So to choose one part of the dream and to start to probably to make a body movement or to express a sound with our voice. And uh, we do improvisation with that.